To another video with Nikki Glamour. I hope you guys are excited. If you guys are new here to my channel, welcome. I would love to have you be a part of my glam fam, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. I hope you guys like what you see. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I get one of my go-to looks. It's one of my favorite looks that I like wearing anytime I want to go out and just look cute very fast. This is a very nice, soft, smoky brown eye. You can wear it with anything for any occasion. I just love it. And it's super, super easy to achieve. So that's what we're going to be working on today. And I'm also going to be mixing in a little story time and I'm gonna be telling you the story about the time that I dated my guitar teacher so I hope you guys are excited grab your wine grab your snacks because we're about to have story time I'm super super excited I love hanging out with my glamazons that's what I call my lovely subscribers here on my channel I have such a deep appreciation for all of you guys that come back here and chill with me for my story times and for my get ready with me's I really appreciate it and to show my appreciation I love showing off one of my glamazons to the world during the beginning of every one of my videos if you would like your chance to be my glamazon shot of the day it's super simple just follow me on instagram or twitter i do toggle between the two and use your hashtag glamazon shot and send me your beautiful selfie i pick randomly on the day of filming so it could be you any day girl so make sure you head back here to see if you're the glamazon shot of the day today we're going to be going through twitter because i do believe i went through instagram last time today's glamour shot of the day is our girl tasha you can find her on twitter under tasha i09 she said i finally got some nikki glamour merch courtesy of my bitch <laughs> <laughs> she added her friend. Oh my god, that is a real ass friend. Thank you so much, girl, for being one of my writer dies. Look, you're at work. Do you work in a library? Yes. My glamazons are educated. Okay. Go follow her. Show our girl some love. Thank you guys so much for all of your love and support that you show me every single week. I really appreciate it. You guys know that I would not be here without you, and I could not do this without each and every one of you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now let's get into the story time, and I will show you guys step by step how. I got this look. Are you ready? Leg up. Okay, so starting with the fresh face, I did my brows off camera because they take forever and nobody has time for that. Yay, I'm so excited. I hope you guys have your wine, your snacks, everything you need because we're going to have a little story time. So today we're going to be talking about the time that I dated my guitar teacher. I'm going to let you guys know what ha happened. Do I play the guitar today because of him? Who knows? Let's find out together. I usually start off my story times based on whether or not I was with David yet. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, I've been with my husband for almost a decade now. At this time, honestly, this was like right before I met David. I'm talking about like a few weeks before I met David. I was 19 years old at the time and I was working at this smaller company and it was in Lodo. I say small, I mean small. There was probably only like 15 if that people working in the office that like worked for this company everyone in there was like in their mid 30s or their 20s like nobody was older than that so i started working at this office and everything was all cool i did like receptionist type of work it was like stuff that i could do with my eyes closed and i met one of my really good friends i'm still friends with her to this day her name was amanda hey girl she and i ended up getting really close and she became like my older sister kind of i would go to her for everything like all kinds of advice and you know we would party together and she would have like you know house parties that I would go to and we just started doing a lot more outside of work together so she and I became really really good friends let's back up the story a little bit right out of high school my mom knew that I have always had an interest in music I used to sing a lot. I've been singing since I was like three years old. I've always been in choir, but I've always wanted to play an instrument. And the instrument that I've always wanted to play is the guitar. I've always wanted to learn how to play the guitar or the piano, but mostly the guitar. Right out of high school, Christmas came around and my mom actually gifted myself and my stepsister guitars for Christmas. And they were acoustic guitars, beautiful. I was so excited so i start working at this new job i'm young i'm single so of course what do i do i start looking around to see who i think is cute in my office just a little bit of eye candy you know get you through the day so i started getting to know everybody everybody was super cool and super chill and then i met this guy he worked in like the accounting department and he was very quiet very soft-spoken we will name him Seth. I meet Seth and he's really funny i don't even remember how we met or why we started talking but you know 
things happen in the office in the workplace i would be lying if i said that there was like instant attraction there because like there wasn't he wasn't an ugly person there was nothing wrong i just i had so much going on like outside of work and dating and like going out with my best friend and doing this and doing that it did take me a minute look at seth and be like hmm He's kind of cute. So a few months went by actually of he and I just, you know, just talking, you know, normal stuff at work. Gradually, slowly but surely, things started getting a little bit more flirtatious, joke around, send funny emails back and forth to each other. Then it started getting to the point where like, anytime we were in the same room we just naturally gravitated towards one another Seth and I would be standing next to each other or somehow we would just like be together one day came around and we had one of our meetings and it was like a company-wide meeting again it's like 15 people so it's not like huge huge you know and they would order catering and a lot of times we would have lunch meetings and then it would like extend out and like we legit would be in the conference room all day just hanging out after you know we handle business of course but it was a super fun environment to work in so one day came around we had a meeting we had lunch they had chipotle catered it was amazing i had gone in there got my food and went and sat down you know at the conference table with everyone and then seth walked in he got his food and he came and he sat down right next to me and I was like, it wasn't a big deal. I was just like, oh, you know, this is my homie, whatever. But I just remember that day specifically that my friend Amanda and like some of my other really close work friends, they were like, ooh, like something's going on between Nikki and Seth because he just beelined it right towards me. And like the minute he sat down, we're just like joking around and you know, whatever, just we were flirting girl like you know what i mean i don't even remember exactly what we were talking about but the topic of music came up and instruments and stuff like that like what everybody knew how to play i mentioned that i had an acoustic guitar just sitting in the back of my closet and i was telling you know my friends i was like yeah you know i've been wanting to learn for years my mom got me a guitar for christmas you know not too long ago and it's just sitting in the back of my closet and i just haven't had the time to find you know guitar lessons in the area and find like a guitar teacher but i'm i'm super interested and i've always wanted to play and i want to you know learn really soon and blah 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 right and all of a sudden seth was like i play the guitar and i was like really like you play the acoustic guitar and he was like yeah i've played for years so he starts telling me you know about how he started playing the guitar how much he loves it how often he plays and like you know, he had been playing for years and years at this point. He was telling me that a family member of his taught him. So he never had to go to go take lessons or have somebody else teach him. He had family teach him, you know. I was trying to look into different music stores. You know how if you go to music stores that sell instruments, a lot of times they have lessons there where you can go learn. And that's what I was looking into at the time. And he was trying to convince me that it was easier to learn with a one-on-one -on -one instructor. So he's telling me this and he's like, yeah, you know, I just feel like I learned a lot quicker. And, you know, I was able to ask questions when I had them like right then and there. And I was like, okay well good for you like you had somebody in your family that plays but i don't and i'm gonna have to pay for it and like you know it's just cheaper to do it this way you know because i didn't have a whole lot of money to be paying for a private teacher you know what i'm saying he just kind of sat there and he was like well why don't i just teach you you would do that like you teach like you have classes or what and he was like no he was like i just play on my own but i wouldn't mind teaching you and i was like well, I didn't know, I'm not gonna lie, in this moment, I didn't know if he was meaning like if I should go to his house and he teach me, like it just kind of, like I got kind of freaked out for a second. You don't do this for a living, so like what do you mean? You expect me to go to your house or what? And he was like, no, 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 no. He was like, why don't we just like bring our guitars here to work? During our lunch hour, we'll go to the park across the street and go practice. So because we were located in Lodo, if you know anything about the Denver area, Lodo is like near the Platte River and there's a huge park over there. We were right across the street from that, so he was like, why don't we just take our lunch hour every day and go over there and i'll teach you what i know i got really excited and i was like dude i will pay you like i know that this is not cheap and like i'm not trying to like use you or anything but thank you so much he immediately shut it down he was like no don't pay me like i just want to teach you and i think it's cool that you want to learn and i have no problem teaching you so like let's do it and i was like oh my god yes get cute right like what better way to learn how to play the guitar than to have somebody you have a crush on 
teach you. He started going over to the park and the first time we went over there, um, he taught me some basics like how to tune my guitar the correct way and like I think he taught me maybe one chord the first day but he like just started me off really slow. He was very patient, he was really funny and we just started having a really good time. I started looking forward to my lunch hour every single day because I was gonna go across the street with Seth and learn how to play the guitar. So throughout the week, we kept doing this every day. We were going across the street. And you know, I was learning a little something something, but to be honest, like I would say for like the first half hour, it was like about guitar. And then like the last half hour, I'm not even gonna lie, we would start talking about our personal lives and just kind of like shooting the shit and hanging out and eating our lunch and like being together, you know? We start sharing about our lives and stuff. And he had just gotten out of a serious relationship a few months prior as well if i remember correctly he was probably a good like four or five years older than me okay so i was 19 so that would make him like 23 24 years old lessons were going well i will say that a big downside was um i would say like the second or third day into our lessons he was teaching me a few different chords and i was struggling so bad because it really is a skill to play the guitar and it takes a lot of like finger strength just like in your fingers to hold down these chords and like you know hit the note right and I was having you guys I was having so many issues and like I could not get these chords right and he was like looking at the way I was holding the guitar and he was like everything's fine he was like the issue is your nails what you mean you know I've always had longer nails they weren't this long they were definitely shorter than this but I've always had acrylics I've always liked longer nails. I hate my hands without nails. When I was holding down chords, my nail was reaching over to the next string. So it was fucking up my shit. He was like, that's not gonna get better until you get rid of your nails just while you're learning. He was like, I've seen people play with nails, but like they have to learn how to. But as you're learning the basics, you're gonna need to remove your nails. And I was like, wait oh i did girl i went and got my nails removed for the sake of learning how to play the guitar like <laughs> after that it did get a little bit easier but i will say learning how to play the guitar is not for the week this goes on for like a week a week and a half and i'm talking about a work week okay we're bringing in our guitars every morning and every morning everybody else in the office is seeing that seth and i are bringing in our guitars everybody knows what we're doing i'm still this way i feel like i've gotten better with age but back when i was younger my pride y'all level 10 okay like I had so much pride. So when it came to me dating, I would not ask the dude out on a date. It just wasn't in me to do that. I don't know why. It was just one of those things where I had so much pride and I was like, um, if you want this, you need to ask for this. After the initial date, I had no problem being like, hey, do you wanna go to dinner, like my treat? Like, or do you wanna go to the movies or whatever? I had no problem asking, you know, the guy out on a date after the initial date but the initial one like the first time that we're going out uh, uh i wasn't gonna do it he had to do it i don't know why i was like that i just was you know a week a week and a half had passed and you know seth and i are just vibing and we're just like you know hanging out every day and we're like you know he's teaching me how to play the guitar and every day he's just like getting a little bit closer to me and just like flirting a little bit more with me and like you know coming around me and putting his hands on my hands you know on how to hold the guitar and he's like you know basically just like bear hugging me from behind and you know that kind of stuff like we was flirting girl like there was definitely something there so i was i was waiting on him to bust the move and like ask me on a date and this boy would not like i don't know why he would not ask a girl out on a date and i was getting very butthurt i was very good at making it very apparent that i like you like if i like you there was no question you know how like sometimes you like a guy but like you don't really give him any hints no i was giving all the hints okay like i was letting him you know touch me and i was like getting close to him or like sitting really close next to him and like we would laugh and you know i would do like the ha ha you know like the touch laugh you know to let guys know that you like them like it was very apparent i just remember kind of getting pissy about it so i just decided to stay salty until he came to his senses and maybe asked me on a date had another friend we'll call him tim and tim was like a department head he was one of the managers but he was really young he was really fun and i just loved being around him and he was just kind of like he was like an uncle you know to me tim and i were talking i had to give him something so i went into his office and I gave him, you know, a printout or something like that. And then he and I, you know, just start talking about whatever. 
and he just comes right out and asks me because you know we were friends and he was like so are you and Seth dating or like what is that about and I was like uh so I ended up telling him the exact same thing and I was like no we're not dating not because I don't want to but because like he won't ask and like I'm just not the kind of person to ask a guy out on a date I prefer if he does that and I just feel like he's giving me signals that he doesn't want to date. He may just want, you know, to keep things the way they are right now. So I've just taken the hint and basically in a nutshell, no, nothing is going on between Seth and I. Why? He just kind of sat there and he was like, honestly, Nikki, he was like, I don't know how to say this. He was like, but I'm kind of glad that he hasn't asked you on a date. Like maybe it's for the best. And I was like, what and it was so unlike Tim to be a downer or like but he just got really serious and he was like I just think that in the grand scheme of things you guys aren't gonna mesh well together and I was like why I didn't understand because you guys in every other way like Seth and I just got along really well and we had a good time every time we were around each other and like you know there was just like a lot of flirting and everything so in my mind we were gonna mesh just fine like I didn't understand why Tim was saying this but he just like got really serious and he was like dude trust me like I know that you guys would not mesh well together like being in a relationship and I was like how do you know that? Like, I didn't know Tim that long, you know? So he had never seen me date anybody else. I was like, you don't know me. Like, what you mean? Little did I know Tim had just moved to Denver recently. Like everybody was like moving over to Denver, you know? So he had just moved over to Denver and I guess we have Seth and we have Tim. Now Tim had a friend that knew Seth. So Seth was like a friend of a friend, right? And when Tim moved to Denver, that friend was like, hey, I had this dude, Seth, that lives in Denver. He has a spare room. He said you can stay with him until you get your feet on the ground and you start making money and you can go get your own place. Like, it's no big deal. So when Tim first moved to Denver, he was living with Seth. I did not know this. So Tim starts spilling all the tea on Seth. All the tea. I'm gonna do my eyeliner real fast and then I'll be right back with all the hot tea, okay? Hey y'all, if you like what you're hearing and you love what you're seeing, I would love for you to be a part of my glam fam. If you're not already, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell, of course, so you are the first to know each time your girl uploads a new video. All right, now back to our schedule programming. God, what a difference that some liner and lashes can make, right? So let's get into what Tim had to say. So I'm sitting there and he starts breaking it down, breaking it down. And he was like, look, this wasn't even that long ago. I just moved here not too long ago so he was no longer living with Seth and he was just spilling all the tea about Seth and his like natural habitat and he was not happy he was like Nikki I don't even know how to put it into words the way this dude lives and I was like what are you talking about like I'm going to be completely honest with you he's quite possibly the grossest person that I have ever had to share space with really like I guess I had never like obviously I'd never been to Seth's house but like him as a person just me hanging out with him at work I never noticed that like he didn't come off as like dirty or like I don't know gross but Tim was like going off on a tangent and I was like well what do you mean so I had him elaborate he said that one of the biggest things that Seth did that was just like disgusting and he did it all the time was I guess Seth loved video games which I knew about him and he would play video games a lot when he got home and Tim said that he would like you know Seth and Tim work together but like Tim would go you know to a bar or something with his friends and Seth would already be home by the time Tim got home he was like you know so I would walk in and the minute I walked in the door, I would smell like something terrible. He's like, so I went into, you know, Seth's room to see what he was doing. He was like, he just had mess everywhere, like pizza boxes and like old moldy food and like just all kinds of crap that it was like literally molding in his room and it just smelled disgusting. Okay, well, maybe he's just not the best at picking up after himself. Maybe you just caught him at the wrong time. And he was like, no, Nikki, this was all the time that I was living with him and it was over a month that I was living with him and it it never changed it was just the way that he lived and I was like okay he has a bad habit picking up his food okay I get that like that is super gross and he was like no he said the straw that broke the camel's back for me and why I had to get the hell up out of there and like move immediately was the fact that I started smelling 
pee everywhere like everywhere I went in the house I was like smelling pee one day I came home and the entire apartment just smelled like pee what and he was like yeah so you know I start of course looking for the source and after some searching I found out what the source was and the source was Seth what he smelled like pee and he was like nah like what he was doing he had the whole apartment smelling like pee he was like Nikki he would play his video games you know because he was like a huge like xbox fan or whatever so he would spend all night playing video games and he would get really into the game and not want to get up and go pee he was like so it was like any bottle he had but mostly he would save milk jugs like empty milk jugs he was like and when he had to pee and he didn't feel like getting up pausing the game he would literally grab one of those empty bottles and just pee in it and then just leave it there. Like it would not be picked up for weeks. By the time, you know, I was like getting ready to move out, the entire apartment just smelled like piss. What, Tim? Like, I could not believe what he was telling me. He was like, Nikki, honestly, I normally never do this. Like, I don't want to rain on your parade, but I'm telling you that I could not stomach living with him. He was like, I'm gonna be real with you. I think that him not asking you on a date is like, you're dodging a bullet because that is just genuinely how he lives. That's just like, you know, how he runs his shit and it is disgusting. And I just don't think that you would be about that life, you know? I straight up, I was like, no, I would not. That is so nasty. What do you mean? And so I start getting grossed out, but then a part of me was like, dude, you could be lying or like you could be over exaggerating. And so, you know, I'm like, whatever, Tim, like you make him sound terrible. And he was like, I'm t Nikki. I am not exaggerating or over embellishing at all. He was like, I'm trying to save you and tell you exactly like who he is and how he runs his life. And I'm telling you, it is disgusting. So, you know, I'm still kind of sitting there like looking at him sideways, like, is it really that bad? And he was like, look, the next time you go talk to him, he was like, go in his office right now. Cause Seth had an office with another dude. And so he was like, you go in there at some point today he was like, and I want you to look on his desk. He drinks sodas all the time, you know, in like the plastic bottles. You go in there, you'll see that there's like a whole area on his desk full of empty plastic bottles. He was like, and then by the end of the day, those plastic bottles will be in the backpack that he brought to work. Just watch him. He'll put all of those bottles into his backpack and take them home because he pees in them no when he was like nikki i'm telling you so i sure did i tested it and after i talked to tim you know later on that day i stopped by seth's office you know just to chat or whatever and while i was in there i made it a point to glance around and just like look at his desk and sure enough next to his monitor there were like two or three of like the coke bottles like the plastic ones they were completely empty and not they weren't just empty they were like you could tell they were rinsed out there was no sign of any coke left in them they were just completely cleaned out and placed on his desk you know while i'm talking to him i'm like oh hey how you doing and i'm just like looking over at those bottles and i'm like no way like no way is he gonna take those home like who would put empty bottles on their desk just in the corner like why would you not put them in the recycle you know what i'm saying or like get rid of them i talked to seth for a little bit and then i went back to my desk did my job of course and then the end of the day came around and i was getting my lunch bag and everything out of the break room and the break room was like literally right next to seth's office getting ready to leave and i kind of like peek my head in there to like say bye to Seth and the other guy that was in there because he was my friend too. The minute I peek in there I see you know my other friend in there and I'm like you know bye I hope you guys have a good weekend or whatever and then I looked over at Seth I looked in there Seth was like leaning down and he had his backpack on the floor and he was like packing stuff in there and he looked up and he was like oh yeah you know do you have any plans this weekend so we start kind of chit chatting and meanwhile he's like packing stuff into his backpack so you know he puts like his laptop in there he puts like headphones in there and stuff and then all of a sudden this boy reaches up while he's talking to me and just grabs the empty bottles and puts them into the backpack and i'm just sitting there looking at him like I know what your nasty ass is gonna do with those when you get home. Like, why are you taking? Ew! We said our goodbyes, and I went back to the fridge, and I was packing stuff up. And Tim walked past, and he was like, "Did you see it? Was I right?" And I was like, <laughs> "So, needless to say, I was super disgusted, and like my interest in Seth went from like here all the way down to here. Like, I just being with a disgusting person, or like being with somebody that has." 
habits like that i just can't i don't have a stomach for it Ugh. and like usually those types of habits die hard and when a dude does that it's really hard for them to stop doing that because that's just what they've always done you know seth could do that in front of tim who was like a guest and like he just didn't care that just means that that was like a part of his everyday life and i'm not I can't. So my interest in him definitely went down and me being a 19 year old, my attention span was like this. Like once I made the decision that it wasn't gonna work out or there was something wrong or like it just wasn't my jam for whatever reason, I was on to the next. Like I was moving on and I just stopped looking at Seth as a potential relationship. Because of that, you know, our guitar lessons became more and more infrequent and I really was like kind of backing up because my interest was no longer there to be honest i also felt like you know he hadn't asked me on a date or anything so i felt like maybe that wasn't anything that he wanted either but now my interest was gone so even when we did have our lessons i was like sticking to you know guitar lessons and when he would try to like you know venture off into another topic or like get personal or try to get flirty i was like shutting it down and being like okay so what's this chord again like like let's refocus here and do what we're supposed to do because I'm not trying to mess with you like that because it'll feel like he was getting it as well because he stopped, you know, being, you know, really flirty with me and he wasn't being as touchy feely with me. So I felt like, you know, we were understanding each other and on the same page at this point because just like I make it very well known that I like you, I make it very well known if I'm not interested in you that way. You know, just like by keeping everything very profesh or, you know, just very simple and I'm not trying to lead anybody on, I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but like, obviously this ain't gonna work, homie. Don't get me wrong, there was no hard feelings, like there was no discussion that was had. We just kind of, you know, cordially started spending less and less time with each other, but there was no like malice, you know? One day came around and my friend Amanda, the one that I worked with, her boyfriend at the time, and he was in the army and they had been together for a few years and he was like coming back home for a little bit so she wanted to have like a welcome home shindig and she wanted to go to one of his favorite bars downtown and she was inviting everybody and at this point i had only met her boyfriend once before you know he left and now he was coming back but you know of course i want to be there to support my friend because she knew the owner of the bar because like keep in mind i was 19 at this time so i couldn't drink you know which really sucked because i just that meant that i couldn't like hang out with my coworkers after work if they were going to go to like happy hour which they always were and i was always the one that couldn't go but amanda was super sweet and she was like nah you can go because my friend is the owner of that bar and i already told him he said it was fine as long as you obviously don't drink but you know i already told him and he said that you can hang out with us and be a part of the party or whatever it's not going to be a big deal you won't be asked to leave and i was like all right cool she had told us like a week in advance that she wanted to do this like the next friday after work this party that she was going to throw wasn't going to be for another week right well she told us at work that weekend at the club i met david my now husband if you guys know anything about david and i and our story y'all know that we fell very hard very fast okay like david asked me to be his girlfriend over the phone like two three days into knowing me and he wanted to like date exclusively so like he asked me to be his girl and i was like all head over heels for him and i was like yes and so i ended up like that weekend i met david and by like midweek the next week i was like in a relationship with him you know like i was exclusively dating him so it happened really really fast we started like officially dating and he had asked me out of course you know i had gone to work and told my friends that like I had a new man's and like how happy I was and like everybody was like wow that happened fast and I was like I know but I don't know how to explain it we just vibe like I feel like I've known him my whole life I knew that it was crazy and everyone around me like all of my friends that knew me at that time it didn't sound great right like I was like yeah you know I met him at final at this club and really like him and now we're in this relationship and so like my friends were like girl are you sure about this and I was like yes like you don't understand he is my soulmate I ended up telling David like hey I have this work party that I'm going to like my friend's man is in the army So we're gonna have this get together blah 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 Amanda just wanted it to be like work friends only so I didn't invite David I just told him I was gonna go for a little bit, you know Hang out with my friends and then I would meet up with him later because of course I had to see him up until this point Like I said everything was super cordial between Seth and I like 
nothing had changed. We just weren't hanging out as much. Everything was all good or so I thought. So we get to the bar and when we got there, literally nobody else was there because we got there really, really early. And I ended up following Amanda there so that I could help her set up cause she was gonna like decorate a corner of it where the whole party was gonna be at. Fast forward like an hour and you know, pretty much the whole office was there except for Seth, like Seth was not there. And I just thought, you know, I didn't even think much of it. I didn't even notice at first, to be honest, and like no shade, no tea. I was just like talking to my other friends. And then out of nowhere, Seth comes into the bar and he walks in and he just is kind of off. And he's like talking to some of our friends that are in our group and he's like slurring his words a little bit. And I realized, oh shit he's been drinking like he was drinking before he got here so he's already kind of tipsy and everybody was like noticing it and they were like oh shit like you know <laughs> Seth already got a head start like everybody needs to catch up to him so it became like a running joke he became real talkative and really loud and just like talking to everybody and just the complete opposite of who he was you know naturally we're having fun everything is normal and then my phone started ringing and it was David so of course you know I drop everything because it's my new boo they had like this little balcony area outside and there were like some chairs and stuff out there and there were only a few people out there so I decided to take the phone call with David and to step out there so I could talk to him he's just checking in on me and like you're gonna be leaving soon because we were gonna be meeting up for something I don't know if it was like bowling or something and he was like you know I just want to know when I should leave my house to go meet you so he was like checking in with me to see time wise you know when we were going to see each other right then all of a sudden some of my coworkers start making their way out to the balcony and amanda found me and you know i waved at her and i was like i'm on the phone like i'll be off in just a second she was like oh okay we ended up grabbing a table out there and so it's me and a few of my friends and i'm still on the phone i'm in the middle of this conversation with david and all of a sudden i hear seth come out into the balcony and he looks right at me and i'm just like on the phone and I'm like, you know, wrapping things up. And I just hear him say, who the hell are you talking to? What? And I was so confused and he's looking straight at me and everybody at the table is all my friends. And so they're all confused. I'm confused and I'm like, what? <laughs> and friends are like, nah, he's talking to you. And I was like, what? And so I kind of put the phone down and I was like, are you talking to me? He was like, who is that that you're talking to? He was like, what, your new boyfriend that I've been hearing about? Now keep in mind, by this point, he was still drinking. So he's drunk at this point. It's not even tipsy anymore. It's full on drunk. That you met at the club the other night because that's the smartest thing for you, Nikki. God, like you are so easily manipulated and blah, blah, blah. And I put my phone back up to my ear and I was like, babe, can you hold on for a second? David heard part of it. And so David was like, who is that? like who is that talking like is he talking to you so I'm like trying to answer his question and I'm like yeah you know like there's this guy that I work with and like you know I'm trying to explain it and meanwhile Seth is like still talking shit and I was like I don't know what's going on like let me just handle it I'll tell you all about it later and David David was not letting me off the phone and he was like no like who is that like does he have a problem like what's going on and so like I'm trying to mediate like both situations and Seth is just literally going off just yelling and just like questioning me and he was like so what just tell me what happened like what we just all of a sudden stopped talking like you just play so many games and blah 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 and now you're with this new guy he was like just tell me just tell me what he has that I don't like what does he have that I don't and he asked me that and I'm like sitting here on the phone and I'm like what are you talking about and like all of this was just coming out of nowhere and he looked at me he was like tell me what he has that I don't and when he said that he grabbed his drink and he threw it up against the brick wall out there and it shattered and like everybody just stood up oh my god he was like losing his mind and yelling like got red in the face and like broke his drink and everybody was like whoa 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 Seth calm down calm down so like my guy co-workers all stood up and like grabbed him it turned into this whole thing you guys I was so embarrassed and everybody was like are you okay because like we're just sitting there so confused and i'm like you guys i couldn't even like talk to david for like a second because i was like trying to process what had just happened and how like things got real really fast and finally i could hear david being like hello hello are you okay hello so finally you know i get on the phone and i was like hey and he was like hey what happened like what was that noise are you okay 
And I was like, yeah, I'm leaving right now. And so I got my purse and I was standing up and I told Amanda, I was like, dude, I gotta go. Like, I don't feel safe here. I'm just gonna leave. Like, I'm really embarrassed. And she was like, no, I understand. She was like, be safe. Like, you know, do you want one of us to walk you to your car? And I was like, no, that's fine. I was just really upset. Like it went from me being shocked to kind of scared to just being upset. And I was like, what the hell? He could have hit me with that. Like, I don't understand why he, went off like that and he was just so drunk and belligerent and it was just so embarrassing and everyone in that bar because it wasn't a big bar it was a very small place so everybody heard him everybody saw it everybody was like aware then these are all my co-workers and i was just embarrassed i had to peace out i ended up leaving and meeting up with david and when i met up with them you know of course he had questions and he was like what the hell happened so i was kind of embarrassed and i had to tell him you know basically this story and I was like I'm not gonna lie to you like there I thought there was gonna be something between he and I and it was very brief and he was teaching me how to play guitar you know it never went anywhere from there like we never dated we never kissed like there was never any intimacy there and you know it just kind of faded away and just fell off and then I met you and then he just went off like I don't understand where all that animosity came from so david was really understanding about it and but it was a super awkward conversation to have you know like with your current mans about a dude that you used to have a crush on you know what i'm saying of course you know when we get back to work the next day it was super awkward and seth didn't say a word to me i didn't say a word to him nobody brought it up you know like nobody was like hey do you remember what happened this past weekend and then, like nobody said anything we just kind of like coexisted around each other but like there was no animosity or like there was no dirty looks or anything like that we just kind of coexisted in the same area but we did not speak to each other and we just kind of avoided one another I was very much turned off by how he handled that whole situation and the fact that he had a temper like that girl no I cannot play that okay I don't play that at all us being at work he just did not want to talk to me and again I had a lot of pride and so I was like well you know you're the one who acted out just completely went off and got belligerent drunk in front of everybody and started cussing me out in front of everybody and just like you know freaking out about me having a boyfriend as though we were together and we never were my guitar lessons of course ended because that wasn't gonna work out i probably got like a good two two and a half weeks worth of lessons but then it ended because all of this happened just kind of like avoided each other at work we never talked about it we never brought it up i ended up quitting that job and moving somewhere else and i never spoke to or saw seth ever again after that and that's how things ended up it was very unfortunate i think now that i'm older had that happened now i feel like i probably would have talked to him afterwards and been like yo like what the hell was that about like you know we need to talk about what happened why do you feel so upset with me um because i obviously i didn't get with david to like spite him it was never that i just you know i took the hint and then of course you know i did hear from tim and it just kind of turned me off and you know it just gradually fell off you know it wasn't like from one day to the next i just wasn't interested in him it was like over a few weeks and then i met david i got with david and i don't know if me talking to my friends at work about david and me just being excited about this new relationship maybe made him feel like i was doing that on purpose to like be like eh, you know i'm with somebody else would hope that he didn't take it that way but maybe he did but either way going off like that and getting belligerent drunk and cussing me out and throwing drinks at the wall and breaking shit is not okay and so that was a big reason why I did not try to talk to him or anything like that because I was upset with him and I was really upset at, at how he handled it you know like first and foremost we were friends before we started like you know having crushes on one another and flirting and everything we were friends and so like why didn't you just talk to me and be like hey like i'm confused or you know i just thought there was something between us or whatever but like that was not the way to handle it because i could have gotten really hurt somebody else could have gotten really hurt and like that was amanda's party for her man like what a way to ruin somebody's welcome home party you know i was just really embarrassed and i did not like the way he handled it at all i don't know so girl that's the story about the time that i dated the guy that was teaching me how to play the guitar and because everything went awry uh, my lesson stopped and i know how to play the guitar 
this much. Let me know in the comments down below, do you play an instrument? And if so, what do you play? How long have you been playing? Thank you guys so much for getting ready with me and just chilling with me for story time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give your girl a huge thumbs up to let me know. Also, if you're not subscribed and you're not a part of my glam fam, I would love to have you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know each time I upload a new video here on my channel. If you guys aren't following me on my socials, you can find them here. Definitely give your girl a follow. You guys can keep up with my day to day what I'm doing. Everything that I used in this video will be down in the description box for those of you guys that are wondering or are curious. I love you guys so, so much and I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Peace out.